Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face and welcome back to this Ferrari challenge today. We've just got a one race episode tomorrow for Sunday. That is going to be a one race episode as well. Today we've got the Austin Grand Prix. Tomorrow we've got Montreal. I've got a, quite a few things going on this weekend so I don't have a lot of time. But just to keep up with the daily updates, we're going to go with one race episodes for Saturday and Sunday. On Monday we'll be back to a double race episode for Singapore and Melbourne. And then we'll finish the season on Tuesday with Sao Paulo and Bahrain. At that point, we'll possibly know who the Drivers' Championship is. Looking at the Constructors' Championships, we're 220 points ahead. Six races to go. That's not enough to win the championship. Five races and 43 points in total on offer. If we don't actually score a point, that would be that would be 215 points. So if we're 215 points ahead of Red Bull after this race in Austin... The Constructors' Championship will be officially confirmed as being ours. After 11 races of the season, that would be amazing to do by that point. Then we can possibly relax things towards the end of the season. If Vettel wins the Drivers' Championship just before the end of the season, if Perez is out of the reckoning by the time of the last season, then Mick Schumacher is going to get a drive before the end of the season. He's going to get a race. We're going to let Perez sit maybe out the last one or two races. Maybe he'll sit out both races in the last episode. It just depends how well Vettel does here in these last couple of races. Whether he does get 25 points ahead. If he gets 50 points ahead by the last race of the season. Uh, by the penultimate race of the season. Schumacher won't have two races. If he doesn't and Vettel's 25, 25 points ahead by the last race of the season. Then Schumacher will get a drive. If Perez is still mathematically in with a chance of winning the title. Then Schumacher will get a drive. But that's how it's going to go there. With car-wise, we've got a new engine in the works coming up. The HQ, we've just built the simulator. We've got these two going. We now have improved the HQ to the point where we're just behind Mercedes and McLaren. We stopped 15 days before the Grand Prix though because we do have a vote coming up on points for the top five, which would take effect, take effect from next season. I'm not really too bothered about this. I do like abstaining. Just let the computer decide what's going to happen. So that's what we're going to do here. I think the computer will go totally against this. Because, yep. And they voted against it. I thought it was going to get a little bit closer. I didn't think the computer would go so much for it. Obviously, yeah, uh, that's uh, the green of Mercedes. So I'm guessing that's Toto Wolf. Yeah, so all the smaller teams would have voted against that. Otherwise, a lot of the smaller teams wouldn't have had any points at all next season. It would have been quite a scrap to just to get into the top five. That would mean like even Mercedes would be f performing really poorly this season because they have had quite a few finishes due to their reliability problems. Due to the fact that Lewis Hamilton seems to take 70 seconds to do a pit stop each time he comes to the, into the pit. Hopefully that's not going to be the case at Austin here. Mercedes is going give to give us a little bit more of a push here. But I'm just going to skip ahead now till the beginning of the race weekend and we'll pick up things when we get to that point. Right, so we're at the beginning of the race weekend here. We just had a couple of males. Uh, Sebastian Vettel designed his own clothing line of plus 25 boost to marketability. Vettel is joining World Rally Cars, so cornering is improved now, plus one marketability, plus five. And also Sergio Perez's start is rising. He's got a learning fast boost now, so his improvability has gone up plus five. So that will mean that he's going to start gaining his stats a little bit more. He's possibly going to get to five, a five-star rated driver to the point where he's going to be pushing Vettel maybe next season. Maybe, maybe he can get to that point. It depends how much he can improve over the course of this season. Uh, we always go with Santander because we've got no trouble finishing first. If we go into this car now, we're almost at the same point. I thought we were a little bit closer than that. But we should be able to sort that out now because this engine that we built is now ready to go in the car. This one that's rated 1,306. We can now give that to Vettel. And now Vettel knows that he's got a better car than Sergio. Perez is slightly unhappy. unhappy. Well, my car might be worse than Sebastian Vettel. But well, that's what I expected. So Vettel has now got this really strong engine. I'm working on the engine at the moment and possibly do another two builds of the engine before the end of the season because we will be able to get an engine that is rated over 1500 and that would be an absolute beast of an engine. Currently we're at 1266. Mercedes themselves are behind that. I'm not quite sure what sort of level they're at. But even at 1266, Mercedes are a long way behind that. So if we can get an engine that's 1500 we would possibly blow them out of the water next season. <laughs> I don't know how quick we will be with that engine, but we're going to go ahead and build it anyway. The gearbox itself is a 1208. I'm not sure whether I've got the time to improve that as well, but we're going to go ahead and try the engine and gearbox. We're going to go ahead for the power unit again next season. Going to have a really impressive engine. 
as we should do with Ferrari. It's one of the things we're concentrating on. We're going to have a really excellent car next season, but we're going to jump right into the race weekend now. We'll come back for the grid lineup for the 2017 Austin Grand Prix. <laughs> Right, so here we go with the grid for the Austin 2017 Grand Prix. As you will notice from the <laughs> one and two on the grid, Sebastian Vettel managed to do a lap of 57.9 seconds. Second, Sergio Perez, whose car, remember, is not that much... It's not that much worse than the car that Sebastian Vettel's got. Vettel has moved, has got an engine that's possibly rated about 100 points better than the one he had before. But he is now 5.2 seconds quicker than Sergio Perez, who did his lap in a 1.03. Hamilton is not that far behind Perez with a 5.4 seconds behind Sebastian Vettel, a 1.03.3. But that engine has made a massive difference to the performance of Sebastian Vettel's car. Now that is a massive increase in performance. I don't know if that's going to happen during the race. It will be crazy if we could do. But we're just gonna have to go ahead and see. But anyway, we're gonna go down the grid here. We've got Vettel, Sergio Perez on the second, on the first row of the grid. Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo in the red ball on the second row. Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen following up as they usually do in fifth and sixth. And then, as usual, not as usual. Look at that. Let's stop there. I thought that was Valtteri Bottas' his head coming up then. But we've now got Kimi Raikkonen in seventh, improving his performance in this Force India that seems to be getting up to speed now. He's usually about 10th on the grid, but he's managed to get himself up to 7th. Nico Rosberg in the Williams in 8th. In 9th place, we get Nico Hunkerberg in the other Force India of 9th. Valtteri Bottas in 10th in the Williams. Julian Palmer still doing decently in the Toro Rossa in 11th. Fernando Alonso in his usual 12th place. Roman Grosjean in the other Toro Rossa in 13th. Verline impressing in his manner up into 14th. Kevin Magnussen in the Renaults who are still struggling in 15th. The other manner of Ocon in 16th. Kvyat in the Haas in 17th. Gutierrez in the other Haas in 18th. And then on the back row of the grid we've got Carmen Jordan still disappointingly. I don't know whether she's going to get replaced at the end of the season in 19th. And Rafael Marciano in a McLaren that is not up to speed here. He's been part all season, all the way at the back of the grid in 20th place. 10 seconds almost behind Vettel. A crazy amount. It's only going to be five laps until he's a, until we start lapping the back row of the grid here. Just hope that Vettel can get a decent start here. We should be able to do up this straight. Hamilton makes a decent start. He's getting a bit close to Perez there. Try to get around the inside. Vettel's not moving away too well here. And Hamilton makes a move up the inside. Vettel, meanwhile, has dropped all the way to third place and he's now defending from Carlos Saints. Carlos Saints tries to go around the outside, now dies up the inside. He's going to have the performance there up the straight to get past Vettel, but Vettel gets the inside line. Can he get it back here? Vettel should have no problems up the straight once he's to up to speed. He should be able to come back at that. Perez, meanwhile, manages to get past Hamilton in the quicker Ferrari and there goes Vettel. The, his Ferrari absolutely super quick over that of Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton... He is pushing his engine again. I don't know if that's going to mean he's going to run into problems again. We're going to have to see whether they've managed to get the reliability up on the engine. Obviously, last time out, if you remember, Hamilton also got found out for using risky parts and got knocked down from, was it 9th or 10th? He, well, he ended up outside the points because he got knocked down. And I'm wondering whether that was his engine. So maybe he's got a bit more of a reliable engine now if he's been forced to go back to a previous engine build. Uh, Vettel is still behind Perez here. Vettel would possibly be away here if we let Perez, if we opened up Perez and let Vettel go past. But we're going to let him race. Hopefully they don't hit each other. If Vettel can stay close enough up to the straight, Perez, I think, still does have the better front and rear wing. I guess I can't. Rem I can't quite remember. So he should be able to stay ahead through the corners, and maybe he can stay ahead enough through the corners. Or hold Vettel up enough to stay ahead of him enough on the straight. That Vettel struggles to get past him. But here we go, down this straight here. Vettel should have the power here. His engine's about 50 points better. We saw what that 5 seconds difference. There goes Vettel. He managed to get at the head here. So we're going to see if Vettel can now start pulling away. Going to have to 3-stop this uh, 
Grand Prix. We can do it all in the Super Soft since there's no tyre regulations. We don't have to go for any other tyre. We can do it all in the Super Soft. Maybe we should start thinking about trying to uh, turn these tyres down a little bit now. But we're going to be able to see that Vettel is pulling away already. Two seconds already over just this little bit of the track. And as we see him go up the straight, he's going to be able to pull away. So Vettel did that in a 105.4 to Perez's lap time of a 107.7. Vettel should be able to keep improving that, although we've turned the tyres down now, so maybe that's not going to happen so much. We're going to have a quick look at, and we've got a safety car. We've got a safety car out, so should we? Who's crashed? Kevin Magnussen's crashed, and Bottas has already made a pit stop. I don't know if he had a problem with his car. That's made him have to come into the pit stop. Is Hamilton? How's Hamilton doing? He's actually got no problems with his car, but he's, we're not at the halfway point of the race, which is where... Hamilton starts running into problems. Are we going to double stack our cars on this first pit stop? We're going to have to because the computer's possibly going to come in as well and do all of this. So we're going to try double stack. It's going to be no problem for us because we'll be able to get back past. We're going to go soft in the middle for Perez because we used up a lot of extra tyre running the practice modes. Right, so should we go fast with Perez just to make sure he gets out in front? No, we're not going to risk it. Just see where we can come out after the pit stop. Hopefully we can get out back in first and second. Vettel should be able to get in and just about out before Perez hits. Maybe, no, Perez is getting pretty close there. It's not going to take long to put the tyres on. And a mistake. That's going to allow Hamilton out into the lead. So we've lost the lead under the safety car here. Perez is now made a mistake as well. <laughs> Perez is out in eighth place. Right, so that's going to make things a little bit harder as we restart this Grand Prix. We do make mistakes on the pit stops. That's possibly because of mechanics. I did try it. And there we can see the uh, Renault of Magnussen all smoking up there. I did try to replace the mechanics. Neither of them wanted to sign. or Well, they did probably would have signed if I had offered them an amazing amount of money. But it was going to cost because they were wanting bonuses for the race as well. It was going to cost about... 600,000 more just to improve the mechanics and we're that far ahead that 600,000 over the course of a season is 9.6 million pounds over 16 races and that is just not worth it just to improve the pit stops a tiny little bit because we don't make mistakes that often there's no point 9.6 million pounds over the course of a season that is the cost of two new HQ parts that's the cost of five new engine builds it's just a ludicrous amount of money to improve the mechanics for that and i don't see the point what we're we doing here too busy talking we're not running in low mode are we we're not conserving fuel um yeah i just don't see the point of spending that much money on mechanics when we could put that into the car we could put that into tire wear we could put that into improvability of the car we could improve that into we could put that into a bunch of stuff really rather than mechanics. Mechanics aren't really that important because we don't need to upgrade the parts at any sort of advanced speed. We, we're not important. We have the car reliable enough from the get-go of the season that we don't run into any problems. We don't really need to work on the car in the garage that rapidly to catch the other cars because we're that far ahead anyway. That It, will, it does not make any sort of fiscal sense just to bring in two mechanics who are about a quarter of a star better. Just just to improve the pit stops by about half a second and not make a mistake in three races. Anyway, we're going to get back to the start here. Vettel should be able to get the run on Hamilton straight from the restart there. Straight from the restart. Vettel goes flying past. We're going to turn these tyres back down. Perez already back up into fifth place. He should have the speed back up the straight as well of the uh, Mercedes and Red Bulls if he, can keep, if he can stay close enough as we get to the straight here. Maybe we can run overtake mode just to get him back into second place here. Just see what sort of speed he can get off the speed here. Off the straight. Hamilton down into fourth. And Perez, look at the speed of that. He gets past Hamilton and Ricardo on the same straight. We're now on the back of Saints so that we can start turning things down a tiny little bit. We don't have to run in anything other than neutral on the tyres for Vettel. And Perez should have the run on Saints here up this straight. All the other cars went for medium. They're not going to be at a finish on the medium, so I don't know why they went medium. Perez actually dropped off a little bit there as he got to uh, got to the straight that he didn't have enough 
He had a little bit too much distance to cover there to catch Saints on the straight. Maybe we should run over Tate Mode here again just to, man just to be able to get him past because Saints is holding Perez up. And there, go there we go, Perez makes his move. Straight away, he's up to about one and a half seconds as we hit the straight. We now we can go try to conserve some fuel. Vettel all the way out, 11 seconds in front already. Just going to have to keep an eye on these pit stops, keep an eye on these tyres. We need about eight laps to go before we come in for another pair of super softs on both cars. That's the point we need to get to. Hughes 19th, is that Nico Hunkerberg? I wonder what happens to Hunkerberg. He's a long way behind. Did he not come in for a tyre? No, he didn't come in for a tyre under the safety car. That's why he's so far behind. We've got Ricardo in third, beating out the two uh, Mercedes. Hamilton, as we can see, doesn't have any problems this time. So I'm guessing, as I said earlier, due to the fact that his last engine seemed to have got found out for being illegal. He's had to revert back to a previous engine that has a little bit more reliability to it. Uh, Verstappen 6. The Toro Rosso of Palmer in 7th. Alonso managed to get into the top 10. Rosberg in the Williams Raikkonen in the other in the Force India. Verlein doing pretty well again in the Manor. The other Williams of Bottas. He seems to be struggling a little bit this season. He had a good going early on in the season. Disappointing for the Williams outfit here that they're not a little bit higher here. They have been taking advantage of the Mercedes lack of reliability in the fact that I think yes, last episode Williams actually managed to get ahead of Mercedes in the Constructors Championship. Being ninth and twelfth this time out now that the Mercedes seems to have got over over their reliability problems at least for this race, the Williams car will fall back down to fourth place in the constructors. Uh, we've got the other Toro Rosso of Grosjean here. Marciello has managed to move. He seems to move himself up the grid. He can't qualify right well. And I don't know if that's due to McLaren being a little bit better at strategy-wise. Because Marciello and Jordan, they seem to move back up the race order. And I've not been paying attention to Vettel, have I? <laughs> Talking about all these other cars. Um, we need to get him into the pits. He's that far ahead that it doesn't matter. Too busy enjoying talking about the other cars that are going on here. We've got Ocon all the way down here in the manor. Perez, meanwhile, he needs to pit this lap. Super soft. Tons of tyre left. It's nice that I don't have to concentrate on the strategy too much. And I get a chance to study what the other cars are doing. I do like that aspect at the moment. Let's hope Vettel can get back out on time here. There goes Vettel out. No holding up. Perez this time. A 5.6 to a 6.1. A 30.7. And 31.1. That's not too bad. We're obviously down the order here, but everyone else still does have to pit at the moment. And we do have some life in this tyre that we can start pushing. So we can see what Vettel can actually do. Are these all going to start coming in this lap? So we'll be able to see what sort of performance Vettel has compared to the other cars like the McLaren. They're going to come into the pits this lap anyway. But we'll see how much quicker the Ferrari is over Fernando Alonso's McLaren. And the Mercedes and Red Bulls are stacking up here in the pits. So Ricardo's in the pits. He gets out just in front of Verstappen. Who's ahead here? Hamilton. He's already got out of the pits. No, they didn't just... Mercedes might have double stacked a little bit there. The Williams have come in as well. So we're back into first and second now. Vettel is a long way ahead here. Gaining more time over Perez. It's possibly going to be about 20 seconds ahead by the end of the race. Could he be? What sort of lap are we going to do here? It looks like Vettel's going to set his quickest time of the race. A 1 minute point 0.1. Perez, meanwhile, does a 1.01.4. So a lot quicker there for Vettel. Whereas, and we're not going to be able to see. The Force India does a 106. Bottas did a 102. I don't know if he pushed a lot. It's quite a quick lap from the, uh, from the Williams car. Vettel's going quicker again on this lap, maybe. Does it go even quicker? Vettel manages to get under a second under race conditions. Absolutely amazing <laughs> there. Perez now going quite a bit slower. What's the gap back? Is Ricardo pretty... Ricardo's actually pretty close to Perez here, isn't he? He's actually a lot closer than I thought he'd be. And he's actually gaining at the moment. What's up with Perez here? I'm not quite sure why Ricardo's gaining. No, he's now starting to fall behind. We do have a lot of fuel if we want to. Should we just see what sort of lap Perez can get? Let's try and get Perez the fastest lap of the race here. We have a lot of tyre left to be able to do this. 
We might as well go high mode with Vettel as well. Just not be pushing the car that much. So let's see what sort of lap Perez can do. Now that he gets a chance to fully attack. The tyres are pretty worn so it's not going to be as quick maybe as what Vettel has done. So that's not his quickest first sector. But he does his quickest second sector. 1.2 seconds better than his last lap. Perez does a 1-0, 1.0. And that was the last lap of the race. Vettel has finished in first. Perez second. Ricardo are not actually that far behind in third place, but that's possibly because of us not paying attention when we needed the pit stops too busy talking about the other cars and because of the safety car. Hamilton 16 seconds back in fourth. Saints fifth, Verstappen sixth, Alonso in the McLaren doing pretty well in seventh, Palmer in the Toro Rossa in eighth. No, Rosberg just seemed to pass him at the finish line there. Rosberg just passed Palmer as we were talking about him in the finish on the finishing uh, finishing straight there. So Palmer knocked down tonight. Raikkonen rounds out the top 10 in the Force India in 10th. So Marcelo did 15th, Jorda 16th. Pretty good going there that managed to get in front of both the Haas cars and the manner of Esteban Ocon in last place. Technically, Magnussen is last place for crashing out pretty early on, causing the safety car to come out. So the official rule, the official results there, live timings, the quickest lap. Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo actually managed to do a 59.8. Obviously Vettel would have been able to go a lot quicker than a 59.9 but we never really pushed the car whereas Daniel Ricciardo must have gone all out at some point to get that lap time. Scrutineering, we don't have any problems with the car. AI last time was the first time that they've been running into problems. I think two cars got demoted places. Possibly not going to see that this time. No we don't. There we go. That's 43 points. That is the Constructors' Championship for us this season. And Vettel is now 17 points ahead. He's going to confirm the Drivers' Championship before the end of the season. Pretty easily, I feel. We're now 240 points ahead. We needed to be 215 points ahead at this point of the season. We've now scored double the points of what the next best team have done. We've won the Constructors' Championship. A massive 455 points already. Mercedes still struggling, 151. 64 points behind that of Red Bull. But they've now managed to get back in front of Williams. Force India seems to have sewn up the top five. Managed to get fifth. And it's going to take a lot of work for Toro Rosso to be able to get anywhere near that. McLaren still battling with Toro Rosso for that sixth place. And it's all pretty much down to Fernando Alonso is McLaren's positioning at the end of the season. Because Rafael Marciano is not going to be able to get the points. Renault have now got 20 points. Mana have got eight. Haas. More than relegated now, it's going to be a lot for them to even get seven points, to even get one point even. So there we go with the end of this race weekend. It's been a pretty good American Grand Prix. We didn't get as far ahead as I thought we would going by what we did in qualifying. That is because of the safety car and the pit stop as well. We've got Schumacher improving. Perez does have this improvability stat now. That improvability, a little boost. So he should start improving a little bit more as we go on here. 3.6 million into the bank. We're now 12.6 in the bank. Tons of money floating around. Might even build a next year. A few HQ bits at the end of the season. I have that all ready for next season. Ready to get going. We're going to have that amazing engine next season. We've got Montreal coming up tomorrow. That's going to be wet. You do want to win at Circuit Gio Villeneuve. Just like Monza, it's one of the tracks that I really like. That Sao Paulo, they're the tracks I really like to win at. I've got some questions here. A 1 2, it's all down to the drivers, we'll say that, even though it's all down to the car pretty much. It was a fairly solid result, but there's no need for Sergio to get that worked up with about it, even. Hard fought win for Vettel. The car, this engine is going to be ready. Is that going to be ready to go in the car? Will I be able to get it up to scratch in time to go in the car for next season? For next race in Montreal, we're going to find that out next episode. As I said, this is a one race episode. Today, tomorrow, we've got Montreal coming up. That's a one race episode. Then Monday, Tuesday, we've got double race episodes for those two coming up, which will then be the end of the second season. Finally, we won the Constructors' Championship after coming so close last season. I do want to do a little bit of work on the suspension at the moment because that's the only part of the car that we are not the best in at the moment. That is where I want to get concentrate on after I've got the engine to where I want it for next season. I want to get the suspension up to speed and then possibly a few new gearboxes so we've got a massively, a massively advanced power unit going into next year. 
But that's where we're going to leave this episode. Thank you everybody for subscribing. Hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscri subscribed already. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And I will see you down the road in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix next time. And goodbye.